be picking up. It's a pleasure to be joined once again by Derek Brown, the beatbox specialist at the saxophone. And um, we had you come into a clinic for us, I, c I forget when it was now, maybe four years ago or so. Can you remember? I don't remember. Right. I would say probably four years ago. Let's yeah. just <laughs> roughly say that. So it's great to catch up with you again here at NAMM. And um, yeah, I mean, what Derek does, if you don't know, I mean, he's pretty legendary out there, right? Is he's got this unique form of beatbox sax. And uh, I think the best thing to do really is just to get you to demonstrate because the playing does demonstrate more than me trying to verbally describe what you do. So maybe you can just give us a quick demo. Okay. There we go, beautiful, right short but sweet. <laughs> so, I mean, where do we start with all that? I mean, is it exhausting doing this? Because there's no break, there's no let up. I was just thinking about this last night. I thought, if I run into Derek Brown, what am I going to ask him? And what occurs to me is, I mean, you're well known for doing one-man shows. I mean, typically you would be playing for like, what, two one-hour sets or something? Yeah, really. Like, yeah, entirely. Minute show, yeah. Right. Sure. And I mean, I find it just tiring enough just doing like a, a typical gig where I've got like five musicians behind me. And it's like you know, all this space and you think about what you're going to play next. Whereas for you, it's just this continuous flow. I mean, how is that for you? Yeah, I mean, if you had told me even like eight years ago that I'd be doing one man shows for 90 minutes, I would have said, what? Like, that's not possible. One, I would have said, that wouldn't be interesting enough. That'd be boring. I wouldn't think you could keep a show interesting or entertaining. But two, yeah, the physicality, I would think that's one guy, because, you know, you, you take a breath and all the sound stops. And so, yeah, it was, you know, this my, my style, it was like a slow evolution of, you know, hearing this technique, hearing that one, applying it, maybe doing like little short shows here and there, like uh, maybe opening for another band, doing three sets, but just keep push. I just kept pushing myself. Yeah. To see, like, oh, maybe I could do, oh, if this person wants like a 15 minute set, sure. And, uh, oh, maybe I could do this master class for 45 minutes. Yeah. And as I slowly got more techniques, and I also started to think about, I'm a big believer in like actually like putting myself in the audience's shoes, which I feel like a lot of musicians, especially in the academic world, we don't do. We, we're afraid of like selling out or something. But like putting myself in the audience and thinking, like, what would I actually want to see in the show? and what would keep it exciting. And so a lot of that, that might mean like putting in humor to my show, talking to the audience, which also gives me a, a break yeah. on the mouth. Yeah. But also, you know, adding things like words, singing. And that was, uh, you know, another stage of my development, trying to actually sing and play. And that sounds great. I think you did a bit of that for us in the last time you came to Sax.co. And I guess you're just doing more of that now as you become more confident as a singer, not just I am a sax player, but I do all this other stuff a on top. Bit, yeah, and, and and also adding things like, you know, adding rings where I'm sure. physically striking the instrument, you know, yeah. stomping the stage, which also gives my mouth a little bit yeah. of a break. I, um, mean, I mean, your sax looks beaten to shit, right? But I mean, that's all part of it. I mean, tell, what, what's this here? Tell me about this bit. It, yeah, it looks like I'm like holding it together with glue and plastic. This is actually just me. Once I have, you know, mostly I'm hitting this with yeah. the ring. Oh, what, so what happened here? This this is surgery, right? <laughs> this is actually me realizing that not just to get sounds going down, but also up. And so I I, I kind of shaved it you off. Sold it and, off. Yeah. But it also gets worn down over yeah. time. But then I was just like, well, I have these rings on. I wonder, are there other yeah. sounds I can yeah. do? And so it's like, oh, that's cool. But oh, plastic, it's, it's all about the beat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what else can I do? Yeah. And I, yeah. Like on my Instagram channel, Beatbox Sacks, I, I go into all the right. details of these like modifications. I, I'm sure you do, but I'm just fascinated. As I see the sacks now, I kind of want to ask various questions because as I do the rounds here, I just see these pristine saxophones yeah. without a scratch on them. Yeah. It's quite refreshing to see this, you know, well gig used horn. And I mean, it's only four years old, which right. is crazy. <laughs> I can believe it though, I've seen the way you play. This one here, the F sharp key, you bent this in for yes. some kind of 
this is key. This is key. I feel like all saxes should have this. You know, it's like palm keys here. We don't play a high D by going like this. We we use this part of our finger. Right. And so this is kind of like a palm, like a way of playing that. And especially when I'm doing my one-man show, I'm yeah. often jumping from low yeah. to high. Yeah. And so going from low, I don't have to lift up my finger. Yeah. I can just do that. Yeah, straight on the edge of it. Yeah. 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 Or like... Uh, where I'm, I'm doing this weird little C fingering, but I can just slide right into it. So, yeah. And in terms of the gear, just a little bit more. So you're a Leger artist, right? Uh, we've got BG Lig here and a P Mori. Oh, uh, is it B? Yes, it is BG. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And a P Mori at horn. Just on the reed, firstly. I mean, do you find it essential to have to have a, a synthetic style reed to help you with the abuse you give the reed? In reality, I don't think, I mean, it's not necessary. Uh, like, you could do all these techniques that I do with any read, sure. but yes, I am pretty abusive, and so the synthetic does yeah. last a lot longer. I can imagine. Yeah. And then a key thing for me is not just any synthetic will do. Like, I want a synthetic that actually responds as yeah. good as any cane read, and that to me right. is the Leger signature. And that's the signature, yes. yes. Plus, in, in more recent years, I've been extra violent with my read, and I've even done a couple of Instagram posts where you can see like a picture of my very bloody oh. read and mouthpiece, because I'm doing things like flap tonguing, I'm right. flicking my tongue up and down, not to mention yeah. doing this. You can even double tongue going like this yeah, on the read. Yeah. I mean, you're properly committing yourself to the cause. I guess it's a bit like you know, a rugby player out there, after 90 minutes, they're gonna have blood pouring from them. Yeah, no and you put no that the same passion to Battle yourself. scars. It, it makes sense, yeah. And uh, so, I mean, it sounds great. I mean, tone, I mean, people probably often talk about the, the effects and the techniques that you produce. But I also hear, you know, a great musicality and a soul in your playing as well. Oh, you. So, you know, at the same time, I assume you're, you're after producing a good, cool sound that, that does all the things that sax players think about when they're trying to devise up their sound when they're 12, you know. So do you, do you find that you work on sounds and you, you think about sound all the time and does the P. Moria as a horn come into that as well? Yeah, I mean, I... When I was younger, I didn't focus on sound as much. I remember my teachers all saying, do your long tones and all these things. And now in my later years, I realized how right they were and how important it is to have a good sound. And, you know, I, a lot of, you know, I want, I do all these videos, these tutorials about making these effects and everything. And I feel bad that I'm not able, I don't, I haven't been focusing as much on the sound aspect. And I, I feel bad for people who only want to just like, just do the effects yeah. and they have a really terrible sound and yeah. so I do need to stress that more Absolutely. and obviously having really solid equipment is going to help you with that yeah. and like the P. Moriat for me I feel like this horn gets that kind of classic vintage sound that a lot of people are going for better than even those original companies that made those yeah because it's a modern uh, version right so yeah, yeah and plus I do like the modern horn that I well one I feel like the uh, like the Mark VI People aren't gonna kill me if you know, like if I, they see me. <laughs> yeah, doing you won't all this get stuff. so much abuse on your social channels. <laughs> but too, I mean, this thing is—it's a—it's a war horse. It's yeah. like yeah. I've had this on the road all the time. I barely—I take it in the shop once in a while, but I can't take it in all the time. And right. so, it's yeah, it's withheld I, a lot of abuse. It's, it's done you proud. And yeah. uh, when you come to do the next clinic with us in one, two years' time, I'm gonna see if it's still the same horse. Oh yeah. Derek, it's great to catch up with you again, and uh, we'll see you soon sometime. All right. Nice one. Yeah. Right. yeah. Let's see.